I thought you just said no. I thought you said there's no history of any kind of ban for anything that doesn't relate to felonies. I, and and, and I, I want to be clear that the, there is no one that I've found anyway. Um, I think it would stem from a court's either historical equitable powers or uh, you know, the rights of the government to literally protect someone from imminent danger to life and limb. Uh, there are examples, uh, some of the early Justice of the Peace manuals that talk about if you see someone who is on the way to commit a crime with a weapon, you can take the weapon away from them and you don't have to institute proceedings immediately. However, you do have to institute them pretty quick after that. I'm so confused because I thought your argument was that there was no history or tradition, as Justice Kagan just said, of this kind of, of disarmament in this circumstance. But now it kind of sounds like your objection is just to the process. Like, are you making Judge Ho's argument only? Uh, no, Your Honor, I'm not making Judge Ho's argument only. The, the law that's before us right now is a ban. It's a ban that's passed by a legislature, and it, um, it is, you can't get around it. You can't even ask the state court to say, you know, I will accept a protection order, a stay away order, just give me permission to keep firearms for my own self-defense. That will not prevent this ban from kicking in. Um, and it has severe penalties that result from it, and it applies everywhere, even in the home. I think all of those things together make this statute unconstitutional. I understood the question to be, what about something else? Would that be constitutional? And I think so, but we would need to know, uh, we do need to do a full workup on the history and tradition that supported that. Uh, you know, that's, a, that's something that I don't think this court can answer in this case, because there's no such law before the court. Well, 